Hello. Hello. Yes, I am a bit early. Oh, well. How's it going over there? Good, quite good. What about you? That's good. I got some more time on the drums last night. Very good. I'm at this point now where I can do, what is it? I've been trying to practice um, <clears throat> I guess I don't know what the word for it is. It's like a fill where I use uh, three limbs. So like leg, left, right, something like that. Uh, so I can really quickly do like a uh, roll between the kick drum and the snare and a tom or something. It sounds really cool. I can travel all over the kit. That's really fun. I'm trying to work my way up to all four limbs now. So like left leg, right leg, uh, and it is breaking my brain a lot. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I can understand that. That's where you need to get rid of your brain at some point and it just needs to work out right. Yeah, I've never been really good at doing the formal practice thing where I think the way you're supposed to do this with drums is like practice your rudiments and your patterns like really, really, really slowly to the point where it's just happening on autopilot and then you can speed it up. I don't really do that. <laughs> I just kind of keep trying until it works and then I go faster. <laughs> like, I don't know, I have, I have a couple of rudiments down. Um, paradiddles and double paradiddles and stuff, paradiddle diddles, whatever. E-I-E-I-O. Mm-hmm, totally. I'm trying to look around here. Do I have any sticks here? Yeah, I do. Yeah. There we go. Feeling good. One of my uh, close friends and former roommates was a jazz drummer in high school and in college. And uh, yeah, that, that breaks my brain. He was, he was actually explaining like the differences between uh, drumming and like rock type groups and then jazz drumming and how fundamentally different they are that you have to learn completely different things. And I was just like, nope, I'm, I'm good. I'll, I'll enjoy listening. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's super weird. Uh, I, I haven't taken lessons in a little bit. I used to take lessons on a weekly basis and it turned into something where like my drum teacher and I would just kind of like jam back and forth. Um, his preferred style of play was somewhere in the Latin and jazz area. So he would keep trying to like get me to learn some of the fundamentals. I can at least do like the ride pattern for jazz and kind of have my other limbs do stuff. They're still kind of locked locked um, in sync with a couple of the things that I wish they weren't. Uh, but he kept talking about like, yeah, they're just like swung eighth notes or you can think of it as triplets. It's like really basic. All you do, and I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I understand all of those words individually, but you are just speaking gobbledygook right now. <laughs> Combined, yeah, no, different language. <laughs> Well, I hope that means that uh, today we're all going to be jazzed up and, and ready to go for this, uh, this burn down. <laughs> oh, way to bring it home, Taylor. That was amazing. Uh, side note, I did used to play in jazz band as well. Uh, I played trombone. That was, uh, that was fun. I, I was actually shorter than the instrument at full extension. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Uh, I keep wanting to... So like Jace really knows his stuff uh, with jazz on baritone sax. Uh, so I keep wanting to like just get into a jam session with him because I can at least hold a steady beat now. So I'll just let him like drive the bus or whatever it is and I'll set the, set the beat. 
Uh, okay, I think we have everybody here that we need to. So no, this isn't Friday jazz discussion. Uh, this is actually the Kubernetes 114 uh, burn down meeting, which you are all at and being publicly recorded. So you'll be posted to YouTube later where you can watch yourselves adhering to the Kubernetes code of conduct by not being a bunch of jerks. Did I say today's date? It's March 22nd and I am Aaron of Sig Beard. You can tell like how on the ball I am today because it's Friday. Um, I don't believe that Claire or any of her shadows are here for enhancements, but last I checked with her offline, everything is still A-OK -okay there. It was really fun and helpful to have um, Claire with me. Unfortunately, no cat t-shirt today. Shockingly, I <laughs> had to do laundry. Um, so welcome to laundry shirt. Uh, and I think we're just going to move straight into uh, CI signal. Uh, Maria, let's see. There we go. Uh, should I do it, Kenny, or did you want to? No, you go for it, Maria. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I think l things are looking pretty good. Uh, 140 blocking, 114 blocking has been consistently green and purple, so passing and a little bit flaky, but with relatively low um, percentage of flaky runs, so I think things are looking good. Um, don't have much else to report. Uh, what could be interesting is that I've made a little bit, I've worked a little bit more on APR to make 114 look more like master does. Um, and that involves just breaking things down into blocking and informing and creating a category with upgrade related jobs. Um, I think that's mostly what I had to report. Any questions or thoughts? Uh, I will say on that <clears throat> refactor PR you're talking about, I dropped some capital O opinions that we can discuss offline, but I think the question for relevant to this group is, do you want to shuffle around the dashboards right now, or would you rather wait until after the release? My suggestion would be that you wait just because even though some of the dashboards may look like the game of life or total and utter noise, um, your brains as pattern matching machines have gotten used to what those look like. And so I feel like you can relatively quickly scan them at a glance and you remember what they looked like the day before. And that might be valuable insight to have for a go-no-go -go decision on Monday. Yep, I wasn't in any particular rush anyways. I think I don't think we have much to win by, or to gain rather, by um, completing the shuffle before release date. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, it's, I continue to be like really kind of paranoid that the signal looks as good as it does. Like that must mean I'm missing something. Uh, I'm also wishing that not everything explodes in the weekend. I'll be really sad on Monday. Uh, yeah, well, uh, cherry pick deadline kind of came and went, and uh, nothing has really landed prior to the deadline. And so I'm not going to let anything in uh, now. So the commit that we have that we're testing against right now is the commit we'll be testing against all weekend. Um, all right. Uh, bug triage. Uh, Nick, you're going to be giving that update for us. Yep, I am. Um, so we're looking all green from bug triage. We have like one outstanding PR, and I think the uh, issues have been brought down pretty uh, far as well. So it's margaritas on the beach for bug triage. Um, it's not too bad. Uh, also, did you did a Sig beard get a trim? <laughs> You know, I've had like so many people ask me that recently. I got a trim like two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. I think it's just because I'm wearing my hair back now. So you can actually see that it got a little more trim. Oh, it's looking good. Maybe the shirt is accent and accenting it today. <laughs> and so I don't have a cat to fixate your attention on. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cheers, man. Cool. Uh, do we have Amit on to talk to us about test infra? 
or Duval, maybe you want to uh, talk in his place as a shadow. Hey, um, so Ahmed is not here today. I'm Tara. Um, so he mentioned that there really isn't much update. Um, so everything is looking pretty well. We have two cherry picks that went into 114 and uh, no misconfigured jobs. So everything's good. Okay. That sounds good. I've been keeping a loose eye on the testing ops channel and I believe that um, that's going well. Okay, any questions? Cool, okay, let's move on to docs. Yeah, thanks Aaron. Um, docs are all good. I I'm all in favor for uh, switching green status to margaritas on the beach though. <laughs> I think that's more appealing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe that's a more acceptable color than chartreuse. Uh, which reminds me, uh, Maria, I don't actually see a color for you. Yeah, that's cool. We'll, we'll check back in a little bit. Uh, uh, Jeff, how are release notes looking? Uh, change log is locked in. All the dependencies are up to date. Uh, the only thing we have left to do is to pull in the known issues and then make sure all the wording's consistent. So we're green. That'll be, probably be done tonight. Okay. Um, so can you and, and or Hannes walk me through when we actually press the button to cut the release, what happens with release notes? Like how, do, how does all of the fine work that you're doing land and when does it need to land relative to a button being pushed or a tag being set or anything like that? So that is a wonderful question. And that would have been uh, a question I asked Dave. I would assume that the release can be cut and then we can merge in the notes after the release is cut, unless the change log is also distributed with the binaries and not just over GitHub. Uh, so I believe it is over GitHub. My thought process goes something like, it'd be really cool if the change log about 114 was up to date um, if I looked at the 114 tag um, rather than a cherry pick that landed immediately after. Um, so I don't know that we have to answer it on this call, but I think that maybe it would be worth just looking back uh, historically to see the order of operations before. I'm doing that right now. Cool. Um, I, I think the reason I'm asking is because somebody had a PR open about fixing like a typo in the change log file on the release 114 branch. I'm like, I mean, thank you for your contribution, but it's about to get squashed entirely by the work of the release notes team because that's where all the work has been happening lately. Okay. Uh, let's move on to comms. I think Caitlin, you're here to talk to us about comms today. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to give the update today, jazz it up a little bit for you. Happy Friday, everybody. Um, today, we are at a green status. We have uh, mostly everything in. Uh, no big blockers, and we're, we're looking good. Pretty happy with the progress. Excellent. I had a lot of fun talking to people yesterday, uh, as did Claire, I think, and a couple others. Um, super good stuff. Uh, I have one or two of those coming up today. Um, okay, Hannes, release branch. Yeah, hello everybody. Um, we are still on green. As far as I know, it's still planned to cut the official release on Monday. Um, we don't see any open cherry picks. That's basically it. Okay. Um, so kind of the, the same question to you, Hannes, like Monday, do you, do you feel like you understand the order of operations? Uh, it, is, it is maybe, I've been around for these things, but I haven't, it's been long enough that I'm not super into the details. Is the 
I feel like there are some additional steps and things are slightly different to cut an actual release as compared to uh, cutting the RC, but I, I may be entirely wrong. The only difference I know of is that after releasing the thing and before sending out the no notification email, we need to contact the Googlers who will then cut the Debian and RPMs for us and publish those. Yeah. Okay. Jeff? So looking at the change log history for the 113 release notes, the 113.0 release notes were committed by Anago GCB. So from the looks of that, you have to have the release notes within change log 113 and given to the branch manager. I, I believe the way that that works, now that you say it that way, uh, is kicking loose, that I think it will use the release notes the release notes draft that is in uh, the SIG release repository. So where you've been committing the draft lately um, over the course of the release, it'll pick up that file. So when you feel like you have the Google Doc totally locked in place and no more changes, you commit, you open a PR to that file in the SIG release repo, and that should be what Anago picks up. I will double check with Anago, but if that's the case, then we'll have that done and out the door sometime this weekend. Okay. Uh, I thought we had finally gotten this more tight in the documentation, but it's not in the branch manager handbook. I'm just looking to see because that four times a year we have this question. I know. I know. I just even went through and wrote down a bit of a how the sausage is made for 113 doc that I'm actually having trouble uh, pulling up right now. Um, I, I know. I know this happens four times a year. I've watched it happen every time. Uh, I think re regardless of that, though, it's just useful for us to, um, I don't think we have to go through it all today, but my plan for Monday for what it's worth is for uh, after us all giving, you know, go, no, go, is to kind of try and put down step by step the order of operations. I think it's really helpful for us to have something approximating a checklist or a step by step guide uh, so that we make sure we're keeping track of everything. I should what also else? note, sorry, um, in the release notes role handbook, it also does not have that. So whatever we decide on, we will PR that in as well. Okay, Hannes? What else is there, is there need to do? Like my plan was like meet up, um, see that we get a green or a go signal and then I'll just do my stuff. Yes. Call out to the Googlers for the packages and send out the notification email. Is there anything else that needs to be done? Oh, let's see here. Um, so I'm looking at my, my handbook now. Um, let me read this and make sure this makes sense. So it says, go, no, go should generally be clear before the release. And I am feeling like if I had to push the button today, I would say, let's go. Uh, the release notes draft uh, needs to be PR'd into SIG release, and I should have taken a look at it. Hi, I'll take a look at your Google Doc today. Um, Hannes, the branch manager lead, does a mock release build and a mock publication and validates with the release team and broader team, I guess maybe that includes the Googlers, the mock announcement and email content. Because uh, I think this is where like it, it dumps a bunch of text into something for you to copy paste, right? Uh, it, then, yeah, it it bunts, it it creates some document in some bucket, and then the email script uses this file from that bucket and sends that out. Okay, uh, and then it says after that you do a no mock release build, um, and then the next step is starting sometime in the afternoon. So at this point. Basically, all of the bits have been cut. 
it is now time for us to like announce and publish things. Uh, so in Monday's case, we're aiming to do this at 3 p.m. Pacific. Uh, we have comms stage the blog post. We have the branch manager do a publication, or do a no mock publication. Uh, I feel like we should we should probably contact a Googler ahead of time, but it says contact a Googler to get the devs and RPMs built. I already talked to. We... Go ahead. I already talked to Sumi. I don't know his, his real name, and he right. said he's available in general. I my plan was to let him know today uh, or talk to him today again um, when I expect. That sounds yeah, that sounds great. I was going to ask if you had somebody in mind. Uh, so please do reach out to him, and I will also uh, ping him to remind him to be active. And um, it's it's Sumi. He is the the one official Googler at this point who handles that for all of the releases. Yes, he's on internally. He's on a, a release engineering team uh, for us at Google. So. Uh, so assuming like all of the bits have been cut and we've gotten all of that necessary and the draft for the blog post looks good, then we say, cool, we announce everything, we publish the blog post. So I feel like I'm going to take what I have in the playbook here and kind of put it into the agenda for uh, Monday's meeting and make sure that we all agree and understand those are the steps to be taken. Um, and then the other thing about Monday's meeting is I suggested this yesterday in Slack, in person, and on the mailing list, I'm going to move Monday's meeting to 8 a.m. Pacific time. So same time as the Tuesday, Thursday meetings. It's going to be the same Zoom URI you use for Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, we're just going to start two hours earlier to give us two extra hours in case something goes wrong. Um, so the idea here is we've told, uh, we've told media to uh, wait for our signal and we plan to send out that bat signal at 3 p.m. And if we find that we need to delay it, we'll delay it. But it's easier to uh, plan to be early and push back as needed. I think that's all that I have. Uh, let me see. Uh, I, I, took, uh, I took all of the responses you all put in the contact info spreadsheet, and I'm doing the needful with those, and it will take me some time to show you the results of all that. Um, but I appreciate everybody who filled that out. And I took my best guess uh, based on that for everybody who didn't fill it out. And I think that's it. Cool. Uh, hopefully, we all enjoy a very quiet weekend. And I will see you all back here 8 AM Pacific Monday. Happy Friday.